which he possessed was his own. But they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of, of lands or houses sold them and bought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles were surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus. Yeah. Having land, sold it, brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. You may have your seats. He dealt with a reset plan for the Father's house. We dealt with the reset plan for the valley. We dealt with the reset plan for the harvest. And we dealt with the reset plan for the future. Today, I want to deal with reset plan for relationships. The grass withereth, the flower faded away. But the word of our God shall stay. Has anyone lately rubbed you the wrong way on your job, in your family, at church, your husband, your wife, goddaughter, grandchild? I want to show us this morning from the word of God how to rub people the right way. How to rub people the right way. Many years ago, so fine, during the colonial era of this country, wealthy ladies were proud of their wide board oak floor. At least once a week, servants would wet rub and then dry rub these floors to make them shiny. We, it was a very simple task involving running a wet mop along the grain of the wood and then a dry mop. But sometimes a careless worker would mop across the grain and it would produce streaks on the floor. So when that happened, the lady of the house would scold the servant for rubbing the floor the wrong way. That's where we get our phrase, to rub someone the wrong way. People at church can rub you the wrong way. Church would be a wonderful place to go if it were not for the people. They don't smile. They're not happy. There are no signs that they are alive. Some of you have been sitting here since 10 o'clock. You haven't shook anyone's hand. You haven't welcomed anybody to the house of God. You haven't even opened your mouth. The praise team has sung beautifully, and you have not been moved at all. Well, maybe somebody rubbed you the wrong way. Or maybe your stare. Your ugly look is rubbing somebody else the wrong way. You know, I've met people in the church over the years, and the only time they ever spoke to me about anything of importance was to criticize. Those folk never had a good word to say about anything. They never offered a word of encouragement, only criticism. Yeah. And oftentimes it rubbed me the wrong way. So let me help you guys this morning from the word of God how to rub people 
the right way. How to reset relationships. So as we reset our relationships in the text, Barnabas, whose name is Joseph, has been surnamed Barnabas. The name Barnabas means son of encouragement. That word Barnabas in the Greek is the same word um, used for the Holy Spirit, paraclete or paracletus, one who comes alongside to help you in a time of need. Barnabas is an encourager. He's the son of encouragement. That's his ministry. Every time you see Barnabas in the Bible, he's encouraging. That's how he lives his life. That's how he gets along with people. Barnabas is always encouraging. So much so, his name was changed from Joseph to Barnabas, which means paraclete or paracletus, one who comes to aid, to give succor, to, to help in the time. So if you want to rub people the right way and reset relationships, number one, always, is on the screen, bring blessings to others. And the people of God says amen. Bring blessings. Bring blessings. Walk with me around the text, Acts chapter 4. 36, 37, New Living Translation. It's on the screen. For instance, there was Joseph, the one the apostles nicknamed Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He was from the tribe of Levi and came from the island of Cyprus. He sold a field he owned and brought the money to the apostles. And the people of God said, Amen. Bring blessings. Now, you cannot ignore the context in which the church is newborn. The day of Pentecost have just passed, and there are literally thousands of people in Jerusalem while the church is in its embryonic stages. Y'all remember, Jews came from everywhere on the day of Pentecost, left their town from Cretes and all sorts of areas of the uttermost parts of the earth to come to celebrate Pentecost. And on the day of Pentecost, y'all know there was on one accord in one place and the Holy Ghost fell and they began to speak in um, different languages. And the Bible says that Peter stood up and 3,000 got saved. So here they are in Jerusalem and they don't go back to their hometown. They stay there in Jerusalem to see what happens next. You got to see this. It's going to bless your life. And because they have turned to Jesus and turned their back on their Jewish faith, many of them now have lost their jobs. They are in Jerusalem. 3,000 men get saved. And they don't go back home, not including children and, and their, their wives. Now, they don't have any work. They were tanners and carpenters and coppersmiths. And many of them lost their livelihood. And they are in Jerusalem with no visible means of support. And Barnabas, who does not even need to be asked, takes his land, sells it, lays the money at the apostles' feet because he wants to bring a blessing. You're going to see it. Nobody has to call his name. He doesn't have to be the, made the president or, or the leader. He doesn't need a title. He doesn't need a line in the program. He's not looking for any pats on the back. He's not looking for any appreciation. He just wants to bring a blessing. My brothers and sisters, if you want to rub people the right way, always show up with a blessing. See how quiet y'all got? Some of y'all can't shout because you think I'm talking about money. But the money is the least blessing that you can bring to somebody's life. I can't hear nobody. Somebody this morning needs encouragement. Somebody needs a shoulder to lean on. Somebody is struggling taking care of an aged parent. And they might need you to call them. If you need my help, just let me know. I'll be glad to come and sit with them for a while. Not talking. It doesn't take money to make people happy. 
Because there are some people who have money and they're the most miserable people in the entire world. Come on, y'all. You'll be surprised when you greet people. Don't do it now. Do it next time you come. When you greet people with a smile, they will give it back to you. Have I got a witness here? You see, because the Bible and spiritual living is so designed that when you give something out, it will come back to you. Have I got a witness here? Whatever you are deficient in, try giving that away. And the more you give it away, the more God will give it to you to give it away. You miss your cue to shout. I say the more you give it away, God will give it back to you to give it away. Whatever it is, if you need money, if you need friends, if you need help, try giving what you need away and see if God won't give it to you to give it away. Have I got a witness here? Now listen, I'm really trying to help you. Uh, because many of you uh, don't understand uh, if you really want God to bless you and start blessing your life, start giving stuff away that you think you can't do without. Have I got a witness here? I come to tell you, God, he says, when you give unto me, I'll give it back to you. In good measure, press down, shaking together and running over. Come on, say amen. You, you got to see this because the Bible is very clear when it deals with giving a blessing. You got to give it to get it. You got to give it to get it. God will not send blessings to you until you allow him to send blessings through you. And you know what? Some folks say stuff like, oh, I, I ain't tired and I, 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 I'm, I'm doing all right and I, I'm reading your mind right now. I used to be uh, just like you before. Uh, uh, but you got to see this here. Uh, that's because God haven't settled all of his accounts yet. Uh, yeah, I'm not tired and I'm doing pretty good. That's because God haven't settled all his books yet and you got to see this because there's uh, people in the body of Christ uh, watch this here that are giving people and giving people are the happiest people in the world uh, uh, and now listen you got to see this they're always smiling and having a good time because when you give it and forget about it God will bless you to have it again now listen, stop um, apologizing for being blessed. Uh, uh, stop, watch this here. Uh, 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 making excuses and dumbing down and, and, and dressing down to make non-tithers feel comfortable around you. Uh, ne never let a non-tither dictate how you're going to dress. Matter of fact, I was looking at a brand new 460 LX Sport. Diamond in the back sunroof type. Come on, dig it in a scene with, with a gangster lean. I'm not, I, I, I'm going to be blessed. If, if you tied, come on, say amen. If you saved your money, if you kept the word close to you, come on, God will make sure you have something to spend on yourself. Y'all not saying nothing. I'm going to preach myself happy and I'm about to get out of here. Ah, the Bible is very, very clear about what we ought to do about our giving and our situation as it relates to our God. God is who he say he is and he will always, watch this, make way for you to do what it is that you need to do. Scripture says, bring all the tithe to the storehouse that there will be meat in my my house and prove me put me to the test that I will not open up the windows and pour you out a blessing that you have no room to receive look at your neighbor say neighbor God is not trying to rob you God is trying to bless you and when you get to the place when you obedient to God God says there's no good thing I will withhold from you if you walk up right in front of me you need to look Look at your neighbor say, neighbor, when you are obedient to God, there's nothing God won't do for you. People that are givers, if you want to rub people the right way, bring a blessing. Always be smiling and always be thankful and have a warm personality. Always be pleasant and always have a giving heart. You may not have a lot to give, but when you give it, I promise.
promise you God will give you more to give again I wish I had somebody I'm being blessed even today I'm being blessed this morning because my mother was a giver yeah. Now she didn't leave us with a whole lot of money. She didn't have a lot of bank account. She didn't leave us with a whole lot of inheritance because she did not have that. But my mother raised us with something that money can't buy. Yeah. Um, you're going to see it in a minute. She taught us how to love each other. Am I right about it, Angie? She taught me how to treat people right. She taught us that it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. My mother taught me. Um, she didn't leave something with me. She left something in me that I will be able to continue to be a blessing to somebody else. My mother taught me how to say thank you my mother taught me how to say yes ma'am and, and no ma'am and no thank you and please y'all cry anybody been raised like me if you want to rub people the right way and we set relationships bring a blessing Barnum is sold what he had and gave to those who had need because he was a son of encouragement so not only do you rub people the right way by bringing a blessing? Secondly, since y'all couldn't shout over that message, secondly, it's on the screen, break barriers for others. Bring blessings, then break barriers. If you want to rub people the right way, bring blessings and break barriers. Look at Acts chapter 9, how Paul was dealing with Barnabas. Watch this. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to meet with the believers, but they were all afraid of him. They did not believe he had truly become a believer. Then Barnabas brought him to the apostles and told them how Saul had been seen the Lord, or how Saul seen the Lord on the way to Damascus and how the Lord had spoken to Saul. He also told them that Saul had preached boldly in the name of Jesus in Damascus. And the people of God says amen. amen. If you want to rub people the right way, you have to bring blessings and you have to break barriers. Barnabas, who is the son of encouragement, got to know a new Christian by the name of Paul. His name at first was Saul. I wish I had a Bible reader. And Saul was breathing threatenings against the church. He was expressing letters against those of the serving of the church. He was a persecutor of the church. And he was on the road to Damascus to arrest somebody when the Holy Ghost arrested him. Yeah. Knocked him off his beast and blinded him. He said, Saul, Saul, why have thou persecuted me? It's hard to kick against the pricks. And Saul said, who art thou? And, and, and Jesus said, it is Jesus whom you persecute. He said, I want you to continue to go on the road that you're going. But when you get to Straight Street, there's a man by the name of Ananias. And when you get to his house, he'll tell you what to do. Now, Jesus could have told Saul what to do on the road to Damascus. But how can they hear except they're a preacher? So the Bible says he was in Ananias' house and the scales fell off of his eyes. And then he spent a number of years in Arabia. And then now he's back in Jerusalem and he wants to join the church. Remember now, Saul was persecuting Christians. He was having them executed. But on the road of Damascus, he bumped into the Lord. Met Ananias on a street called Straight. Scales fell off. He went to a raver for a couple of years. Now he's back in Jerusalem and he wants to join the church. Word got out very quickly that public enemy number one is back. You see, at the time, the church considered Saul the most dangerous man in the world. Nobody would speak to him. In Jerusalem, he was the most hated and the most feared in all of Israel. And now he's back. And he wants to join the church. But they are afraid to take him in. Watch this. Because of his reputation. 
And my brothers and sisters, you know if reputation was a qualification for church membership, I have to run out of here right now. Y'all not saying nothing. Some of y'all acting like you all of that, but some of us in here know that we got a bad reputation. Um, there's some decisions that I made that I wish I can unmake. Um, there's some roads I traveled that I wish I can untravel. There's some things I've done that I wish I could undo. You can sit there all you want to, uh, but you got a bad reputation like I got a bad reputation. Uh, you was a low down, good for nothing, scum of the earth, back biting home mama sinner on your way to hell just like me you was a hoe chasing free basin cocaine sniffing wine nipping pee popping weed chopping cigarette sucking pipe puffing devil ah uh, but you ought to thank god the grace of god you are a liar a conniver a underminer you got a bad reputation but you ought to thank god your bad reputation did not prohibit you to get in the church if i was you i thank god right now because the way i started is not how i'm going to end up oh, shout hallelujah so, so oftentimes when I tell people to tell their testimony, be seated, I tell them it ain't a good testimony unless you tell people what you used to be. Now, I often tell this testimony, not a lot, but I'm going to tell it to you this morning and hope it blesses you. Before I became a pastor, I was a member at the Ark of Safety Christian Church with Bishop C. Anthony Mills. I was an elder there. I was preaching when he wasn't there. I was over all evangelism, over 80 people I was in charge of. I was preaching. I was doing this. I was on staff. I drove him around. I had a big clout in the church, but I had a womanizing problem. Um, I, I wasn't getting high. I wasn't drinking. I wasn't clubbing. I just had a woman problem. Let me say that again. I wasn't getting high. I wasn't drinking. I wasn't clubbing. I had a woman problem. Uh, and I messed around and got caught up with this girl at the church. Uh, yeah, and I did. Uh, yeah, I, I was the man. Y'all quiet here. Yeah. Come on, y'all. This was 15, 16 years ago. This was before I got married and before I passed her. I just got to give you a testimony how I used to be. Not how my reputation used to be. Um, I got caught up with the girl. Made love with her. I wish I could tell you just how good it was. But some of y'all be hating like a mug. But I'm going to keep it clean. So now I kept with messing with the girl. But I was preaching. I had something on my life. I felt bad about it. Every time I would go sleep with the girl. I would come to the altar Sunday morning crying. Because there was an anointing. There was something on me. That wouldn't let me go. But I had a flesh problem. I had a woman problem. So I finally go and tell the girl we can't do this no more by this time the girl caught real feelings for me so she was in her feelings she goes and tell another girl I was going to say broad but I'm going to keep it clean she goes and tell another girl who wanted me but I never gave her a chance uh, so you know how that turned out the girl that I messed with and the girl I didn't give a chance they go and tell Bishop Muse behind my back this was a Bible study that night I didn't go to uh, but I thank God for a brother named El to Mike Reed. He's a pastor now. He calls me on the phone and he give me heads up what's going down. He says, Pastor, he said, Elder O's, um, the girl so-and-so came with so-and-so and let Pastor Muse know what y'all been doing. I'm like, oh my God, I'm all in trouble now. Um, so now she have told on me. It would have been good enough if me and her would have went to him by ourselves. He probably would have covered me. But because the other girl knew he had to deal with me. So I come and deal with piece of Muse. And he said, I'm going to have to sit you down. I said, like, how long you going to sit me down? He said, I don't know yet. But first of all, I got to get you some counseling with this pastor in Baltimore that deal with PMS, power, money, and sex. Because I had a bad woman problem. Um, I will hit you and let you go, baby, like nothing happened. Y'all cried here. I tell you, you ought to thank God. God changed me because I would have been, y'all not saying. So listen, I go now. I go to the counseling session. I meet the brother in Baltimore. He deals with my power, my money, my sex. I had to deal with some stuff. So one day, um, I wanted to quit. He sat me down for about six months. I wanted to give up. I wanted to go and leave the church because I felt bad. People was looking at me. It was all through the church. 
fellowship now. Uh, Elder O's now, he ain't preaching. You sat down now. You messed with the girl. You bad. I wanted to quit and go to another church. But if I would have went to another church, I would have never dealt with my womanizing problem. Um, so the people at the church encouraged me. They encouraged me. Don't you go nowhere. You got something on your life. Don't you go. You stay right here and deal with it. But they was good enough to tell me, you need to leave them women alone. Yeah, yeah I'm not helping me. And I'm thankful to God that I stayed there and I stopped messing with the women. Because now I'm pastoring. If I would have came over here, I would have been hitting everything in the church. But you ought to thank God you got somebody in your life that will tell you, leave them women alone. They encourage me. Don't you quit. Don't you give up. And now you see a man of God that's encouraged. I dealt with that womanizing problem. Every woman ain't for me. Y'all not saying nothing. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you need somebody that will encourage you and tell you the truth and see some potential in you even though you have a problem. I thought that would help you so that they, they were scared. Uh, to take Paul in. They were scared to take Paul in because of his reputation. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got a reputation too. But where I start don't mean I have to end up there. Look at me now. Never cheated on my wife. Never sleep with none of y'all. Because somebody encouraged me to hang on in there and leave those women alone you need somebody in your life that will tell you leave that man alone you need somebody in your life that will tell you leave that woman alone you ought to thank God for those that would encourage you hallelujah glory to God so they were scared to take Paul in because of his reputation and Barnabas said, here we go. Barnabas said, let me talk to him. Here we go. Listen, they were scared to take Paul in. Listen, because of his reputation. But Barnabas said, hold up. Let me go talk to him and find out if he's on the level. So Barnabas now takes Paul in the back and came back to the church and said, let's not be afraid to take him in. He's no longer persecuting Saul. He's praying Paul. Miss your cutest shot. Can I help somebody one more time? And you need to shout with your bad reputation. Ah, the way you start out doesn't have to be the way you end up. Oh, y'all ain't get it. Some of y'all started out bad, but you're teaching Sunday school. Some of y'all was lying and tricking, but you're ushering at the door. Some of y'all was stealing and backbiting, but you're singing on the praise team. Some of y'all running women and smoking, but you're in the musician section. The way you start out is not how you're going to end up. Because when God gets a hold of you, he'll pick you up, turn you around. Set your feet on the solid ground. Is there anybody here? No, you got a bad reputation, but it ain't stopping you from serving. So, you won't see it. So Barnabas, uh, he brings Paul in. Have a seat. So Barnabas, he brings Paul in, right? Barnabas brings Paul in. Uh -huh. and, and, oh, bless his name. And in chapter 15, it's not on the screen. In chapter 15, the church, watch this, in Antioch, Syria, um, was started for a while. And Dora got out that there was some spurious doctrine. Watch this. At the church of Antioch in Syria. So the church in Jerusalem, which is the home church, the council of the church, wanted to find out if the same doctrine was preached in Antioch that was preached in Jerusalem. So they sent somebody to go check on the church because they heard that spurious doctrine, I'm up here, is going on in the church. So they sent somebody. And they sent Paul and Barnabas. Watch this. Now, Barnabas, he founded the church, but he knew that Paul was a greater preacher. So he allowed Paul to preach or pastor that church for three years. Now watch this. Now, now, when you know who you are in your skin, you can celebrate somebody else who can do something better than you. You don't have to sit here. Uh, uh, uh. 
when, when you learn how to celebrate other people, watch this, God, God will bless you. It, it, it doesn't take nothing from me to clap when you sing. It doesn't take um, nothing from me to say amen when you preach. Come on, it doesn't take nothing for me to praise God when he bless you. Because God ain't going to stop blessing you because I'm mad. Are y'all hearing me? Uh, 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 God ain't going to stop um, your gift because I'm envious of what God has, has given you. You have to see this. So in resetting relationships, I got to get out of here and rubbing people the right way. Number one, bring blessings. Number two, break barriers. And num number three, lastly, let's not hold you too long, build bridges for others. I bring blessings, I break barriers, and, and, and build bridges. Now, 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 get this. There was this young man by the name of John Mark. Y'all like teaching, don't you? Young man by the name of John Mark, who was a relative of Barnabas. Now, John Mark, watch this here. They had a shop agreement over John Mark. Barnabas and Paul had a shop agreement over John Mark. Now, 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 they, 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 they had a disagreement, but they wasn't disagreeable. I'm right here. I'm right here. Now, um, because you disagree doesn't mean you have to fall out. Uh, uh, because the kingdom work was greater than Paul and Barnabas. Nobody is bigger than the church. You're going to see it in a minute. It's going to bless your life. Uh, so now this John, John Mark now. Uh, what happened is they, they go on a missionary trip. John Mark goes on a missionary trip with Paul. And for some reason, John Mark, watch this, he got discouraged because John Mark was skittish. John Mark was squeamish. He was nervous. And when the, when the, when, uh, the, tough, when the going got tough, he went back home. And because of that, get this teaching, it's going to bless you. Um, basically, Paul washed his hands of John Mark. Uh, but Barnabas, the encourager, didn't focus on Mark's problems, but he focused on his potential. Get this now. Uh, let me run that back to you again. Let me teach it to you because some of you may didn't get it. John Mark was a relative of Barnabas. And John Mark now wanted uh, to go on a missionary journey with them, but he was skittish. He was squeamish. He was nervous. He was, he was, he was uh, timid. And, and when, the tough got, when it got really tough for him, he went back home. Uh, and, and Barnabas and Paul, watch this, they got into a hot disagreement over John Mark because Paul washed his hands with them because he quit in the middle of ministry. But Barnabas, being the encourager, watch this, took him under his wing because Barnabas saw his potential. That's a big difference because encouragers see potential when other people see problems. Yeah. Barnabas now believed in Mark so much that he parted company with Paul in order to take John Mark with him. Now, I find that very interesting because Barnabas would not quit on Paul, and yet Paul was ready to quit on Mark. I, I think Paul was black. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. When Paul couldn't get into church because the church, listen, the church was afraid of Paul. Watch this here. Barnabas vouched for him. But the minute John Mark falls down, Paul wants to throw it away. Isn't it funny? When people need help, they receive help. But when somebody else need help, they get down on, on their brother. Uh, that's why I say he black because, watch this here. Listen, um, the only people who don't like praise is when that praise is going too much to somebody else. It doesn't take much for me to, to encourage. So you got to see this here. When your brother is down, don't be down on your brother. You need to write that there. Uh, when everything was tough for Paul, and they were scared to let him in the church. Now he's saved. And they were scared of him. John Barnabas vouched for him. But now John Mark is going through, and he needs somebody to vouch for him. 
Yeah. So what John Mark really needed was a bridge builder. He needed a word of encouragement. He just needed somebody to believe in him. So Paul in the text now has disallowed John Mark from following him. But Barnabas now has taken young John Mark under his wing. So in the rest of the book of Acts now, you only will see Paul and Silas. You know what I'm saying, Crystal? see him in the jail at midnight you know you see him Paul and Silas preaching the gospel together but as I hurry to the close Paul is now headed towards the end of his life stay with me the finish line is in view he's in prison so he writes a letter to his understudy his son in the gospel Timothy he says Timothy I need you to hurry now because I'm ready to be offered my time of departure is at hand he says now Timothy hurry up now I fought a good fight I, I finished my course and I, I kept the faith. Henceforth, there's a crown of righteousness laid up for me as the judge would give. And not only for me, but for all of you also who love their appearing. Now, this is the last thing Paul writes and I'm about to shout. He says, hurry, Timothy. Bring my cloak. Hurry now. Bring my cloak. Only Luke is with me. Demas now has forsaken me over this present world. But here's the shout. He says, bring young John Mark with you because he's profitable for my ministry. Y'all miss y'all cue the shout. I need somebody in this place today who has fallen and God has blessed you to come back and get busy because how you started is not how you're going to end up. So bring blessings and break barriers and build bridges. But the greatest bridge building is not Paul. The greatest encourager is not Barnabas. The greatest helper is not Silas or John Mark. I know somebody else that when the bottom falls out, he'll step in right on time. I said I know somebody else when your friends stop calling, he'll show up in the midnight hour. I said I know somebody else who will stick closer than a brother. I said I know somebody else when the world walks out on you, he'll walk in on you. Is there anybody here ever needed him to bring blessings? Is there anybody here needed him to break a barrier for you? Is there anybody here ever needed him to build a bridge for you? Come on, help me introduce him to somebody. He came through 40 and two generations. Stopped off at Bethlehem of Judea. Born in Bethlehem. Reared in Nazareth. Baptized in the Jordan. Perform miracles in a desert place. Wept over Jerusalem. Prayed in Gethsemane. He's able to do exceeding. Abundantly above. All you can ask or think. He's a rock in the weary land. Have I got one witness here? He's Adam's redeemer. He's Abel's vindicator. He's Abraham's sacrifice. He's Noah's ark. He's Moses' bush on fire. He's Joshua's battle axe. He's Gideon's fleece. He's Samson's power. He's Solomon's wisdom. He's David's music. He's Jeremiah's bomb in Gilead. He's Ezekiel's will in the middle of the wheel. Y'all know him, don't you? He's Matthew's king. He's Mark's suffering servant. He's Luke's great physician. He's John Word made flesh. He's Acts coming of the Holy Ghost. Y'all know him, don't you? He's distinctive in supernatural capacity. He's superlative in sovereign majesty. He's exclusive in spiritual beauty. He's radiant in eternal splendor. He's matchless in supernal deity. He died. Didn't he die? But early Sunday morning, 
he built a bridge over my life shake somebody by the hand and tell them neighbor you don't know how he brought blessings to me say neighbor you don't know how he broke barriers for me now shake somebody for the last and tell them neighbor you don't know how he built bridges for me he's a bridge over troubled water he's a lily of the valley he's a rose of sharing he's a bright and morning star he's a morning day spring he's a faithful witness he's the only true potentate have i got one witness here do you know him because every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that jesus is lord throw your head back open your mouth and give god praise come on let's shout if he brought a blessing let's shout if he broke barriers let's shout if he built a bridge open your mouth and give god praise like you already got your glory open your mouth and shout glory how to rub people the right way pray blessings break barriers and build bridges i'm glad that barnabas fought all day because paul wrote stuff like this i can do all through Christ strength. I'm glad that Barnabas brought Paul in. For he says stuff like this. Be not weary and well known. For in due season. You shall reap and faint not. I'm glad that Barnabas brought Paul in. For he said in Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply. All my need. I'm glad with Paul in because Paul said I'm more than a conqueror yeah. Yeah. through him Hallelujah. I'm glad Barnabas brought Paul in for he said I'm forgetting those things that are behind me and I'm reaching for those things that are for I press toward the mark of the prize of the high call which is in Christ Jesus I'm glad Barnabas brought Paul in Paul wrote 13 letters in the New Testament church. And the church was getting ready to put their greatest ally on the outside because of their reputation. Paul was the greatest ally the Christian church had. And the church was about to put him on the outside because of his reputation. You know why we miss what we need in the house of God? Because we keep on bringing up people's reputation. Yeah, yeah, I got a story. And guess what? I ain't shame. I did it. But what I did ain't me. And where I started, I won't end up. Look at you. You with a reputation. You still preaching. You got a reputation. People still liking your posts on Facebook. You got a bad reputation. But you're still in the house of it was the grace of God that got you in. If you want to rub people the right way, whenever you show up, you know, have a warm smile. Be nice to people. Be pleasant. What tripped me out, though, how Barnabas vouched for Paul, but Paul would vouch. But when you are true, told Timothy, go get John Mark. I know he's skittish. I know he's squeamish. But he's proper. I don't know who you are. I don't know why you came. But you got a bad reputation. The devil wants you to think that you can't do kingdom work because of your reputation. Paul killed Christians. He was the persecutor and then became the persecuted. They tried to kill him everywhere he went. 
That's why John and Mark Gleffy couldn't take their heat. They was killing people who preached in Christ back in the day. You had to be a cold-blooded soldier to stand under the pressure of the persecution of the church. They was getting rid of Judaism, the law. Christ has come to redeem us with his blood. And if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. The greatest law is love. Love, write this down, is the law of Christ's kingdom. Love is the law of Christ's kingdom. If you love, you want to commit adultery. If you love, you can't kill if you love. Now understand, righteous killing, you come to try to take me and my wife out, I'm going to kill you. I'm not going to walk up on you and take advantage of you. I got too much love in me. Because I've truly been saved. Love is the law. Christ came. If you got love, you won't come. What is the greatest commandment? Love God with all that heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Would you want somebody to steal from you so you don't steal from nobody else? Love won't let you steal. If you're stealing, you need to check your love. If you're stealing, you need to check God, because God is. How can you steal with God in you? There's a fight in your flesh. We got to move on. We have a Christian to do. If you want to love him the right way, you want to reset relationships. When people were down, you can't cut them off. You got to vouch for them to get them back in. We are the body of Christ. Many members. Christ being the head. How can I say to the nose I need nothing of you? If my elbow is hurt, my hand don't get it, it massages it. I don't know who you are. I don't know why you came today. Some of you may came for a Christian event. But you got set up to understand that God brought blessings to you. He broke barriers for you. He built bridges for you. You're not here because you got here on your own. There was a bridge built. People vouch for you. People encourage you. People pray for you. Because some of y'all messed up after you got saved. He's still building bridges for you. So don't act like you all of that. Ain't nobody come here to see you. We came here because we need Jesus to help us every day. If you want to join this church, you need a real word church that gonna preach the Bible and then make application. You need to come. I didn't come to preach vans. I came to preach Jesus. The Bible. One day I'm gonna die. You gonna need Christ. Who are you? Come today. Make up in your mind this is the day that I'm gonna really get it by the Come on today. I beg you. Get it right today. I don't have a church pastor. I don't have a pastor. I know about church, but I ain't trying to get with no organized religion. I don't like organized religion. No, you don't like nobody telling you what to do. Your job organized, you don't stop going to your job. Because you get a paycheck, you think you can do it on your own. You think you got yourself here. You know the problem why some of y'all ain't getting them? Because you think you're pretty good. Your righteousness is as filthy rags. You need a savior. I beg you, make up your mind today. Come and give the Lord your heart. Give me your hand. I want to pray for you. I'm tired of trying to do it. I made some bad decisions. I got a good job. I got a nice little car. I got a house to stay. I ain't hungry. I ain't homeless. I ain't getting high. But your soul is lost. You can't be tough and get this one. to call them. Is that you? Come. Is that you? Come. Come on, clap your hands. Come on. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't pull them hard as I can. Jacob was not here. Israel was not here. We have a Christian in the room.